In lesson eight, we're going to learn how to sort and filter our data. We'll learn how to sort a field. We'll learn about text, numeric, and date sorts, and the difference between numeric and alphanumeric sorts. We'll see how to remove a sort. We'll see how to filter our records, both filter by selection and filter with the checkboxes. We'll see how to show blank records, null values. And we'll see how to print, print preview, and send our table as an email. As of right now, we only have 16 records in our database. Well, what happens when we have 1,600 or 16,000? These records can quickly become difficult to manage. So we have to learn some tools to work with them to sort and to filter our data. Right now, for example, if I want to find all the customers from New York, I can just come over here to the state column and I can see, okay, there's one, there's another one, there's another one. That's easy to do when you only have one screen full of data. But if you've got 16,000 records in here, my database right now for my business has over 50,000 records in it. I've been doing this since 2002, so I've got a lot of customers in my database. And to find the customers from New York would take me a while. So what do you do when the boss comes over and says, hey, I need a list of customers from New York sorted by last name, and I want it on my desk in five minutes. What do I do? I'm, I'm the boss, so I, wouldn't, I would never do that. I wouldn't do it to you either. But what, what do you do when your boss does it to you? Well, then you have to learn how to sort and filter, right? So in table data sheet view, which is where we are right now, and again, remember, this is just for you, the developer. Your end users will never work with the tables directly, but this is a trick that you can use, and you can sort and filter this data to quickly come in here and find stuff that you need. Now, sorting is pretty easy. See these little arrows here? Okay, all you have to do is find the field you want to sort on, drop that down, click on that arrow, and there's sort A to Z, sort Z to A. Pretty straightforward. I just sorted those in reverse alphabetical order, right? There's sort A to Z. Okay, not that hard to do. Kind of like Excel, right? Except here you don't have to worry about selecting everything. Each row will stay together. Okay, if I sort based on city, I don't got to worry about scrambling all the rest of the data. All right, so we've got sort ascending and sort descending. All right, Z to A descending. Now, very important to remember, and I, t I teach this in all my classes, ascending has nothing to do with the back of a donkey. Okay, all right, you can stop laughing now. You can stop laughing now. Okay, all right, bad joke. I've been teaching that one since, my, since I used to teach in the classroom. I used to have a, a classroom training center before I started teaching online, and I started doing that in, like, 1996. I've been teaching that joke for a long time now. <laughs> If you sort a numeric field, let's find a numeric field here, number of employees, sort that, you'll see sort smallest to largest, largest to smallest, it's the same thing, okay? All right, discount rate, smallest to largest. Now remember, some of our fields that look like numbers are actually text fields, and that's on purpose. So if I sort by phone number, okay, let's say, for example, I change this guy to just 555, okay? Let me sort it again. Let me sort by something else. And then I'll come back in here and sort phone number. Ready? Go. Look, 555 stays with the fives. Because alphanumerically, that's how it would be sorted. The 555 wouldn't float to the top because that's not a number. Okay, that's an alphanumeric sort. Versus over here, this is a numeric sort. Big difference. Okay? All right, in a numeric sort, the numbers are sorted in order smallest to largest, right? So 5, 6, 9, 5, 55, because 555 is greater than 9. In an alphanumeric sort, they're sorted by character. So all the 1s would stay together, the 2s, the 3s, the 5s, right? 555 five, five would come right after 5 because this 5 is less than 6. See the difference? And an alphanumeric sort obviously works with characters A through Z too, okay? So that's the difference between those two sorts. And remember, some of our fields that look like numbers, like zip code, are actually text fields. You'll get a better appreciation for this as we go on. Just again, remember the rule is, are you ever going to have to need to put them in order numerically? Are you ever going to be doing math on them? All right, taking the, the sum of a column of zip codes? No. Okay, you may, you may want to sort them. That's fine, but it'll be an alphanumeric sort. And if they're all five digits long, they'll sort just like numbers would. Okay? Okay, so let's put this back to a normal number. Phone number, that is. There we go. Okay? The data type in the field 
in your table design view, in your properties, that determines how this data is sorted, how it's stored. Okay, remember these are stored as numbers, this is stored as text. Moving on, date time fields like customer sense, you'll see sort oldest to newest, newest to oldest. Again, same thing. A to Z, Z to A, smallest to largest. All right, internally, the way that Access stores dates and times, it's stored as a number internally, and smaller numbers are earlier dates. All right, keep that in mind. So numerically, all right, 1966 is less than 1999. That's the way they sort. That's the way they're stored. This will become important when we really get into sorting and using dates as criteria later on. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, currencies work just like numbers. Yes, no values selected to cleared and cleared to selected. There's basically two sorts. Okay, internally, this is stored as negative one. I know it's weird. All right, selected values, yes values are stored as negative one inside of Access. Do you have to remember that? No, don't remember that. Even later when we get into programming, you don't have to remember that. Just remember zero. All right, yes, no values are either zero or not zero. That's what's important. Okay, but you can sort them either way. Cleared to selected or selected to cleared. Doesn't matter. Let's go up to our ribbon. Now, again, my ribbon is minimized. I showed you this before. Just double click on one of these guys. It'll pop it open. When I teach my developer my advanced classes, I usually minimize this because I don't want to waste all this space on the screen. So sometimes I come back to my beginner class and I forget to open it back up again. So now you know how to open and close the ribbon, right? To minimize it, double click and open it back up again. I showed you that back in lesson three, but I'm going to keep showing it to you. Why? Because repetition is good. Sometimes people get mad at me when I repeat things. Well, yeah, I'm going to repeat things a couple times. You're beginners, and repetition is good. You don't learn the alphabet when you're a kid the first time you go through it, right? you got to repeat it a few times. And yes, you can replay the video, but it's not the same. It's not the same thing. One of the analogies that I like to give in my later classes is that working with access is like playing with Legos. All of the pieces are the same, but you can put them together in an infinite combination. All right, infinite diversity and infinite combinations. Any, any Trek nerds in there like me? Okay. So, you know, the forms, the controls, the text boxes, all that stuff. It's all the same pieces, parts, right? But you have to learn different ways of putting them together. That's my job. I'm going to teach you the pieces, parts first. That's the beginner series, all right? Then as we get into the expert classes, I'm going to teach you how to put them together differently. All right, here's how you manage a customer table. Here's how you deal with context. Here's how you put an order together. Okay, it's all the same stuff. I can make the course very short if I just showed you one way to use everything, but I'm going to show you lots of different stuff, okay? Now, right now, i got a bunch of different weird sort things going on in here. I'll talk more about what these exactly do. You can do all kinds of weird, crazy things like multi-column sorts and all that stuff. But for now, let's just click Remove Sort. That'll take all those sorts off, okay? There's advanced sorting and all kinds of crazy things you can do. We'll talk about this stuff later. In fact, I've got a different video you can go watch right now if you want to, one of my free tech help videos on sorting and filtering. I'll put a link to that down in the link section. If you want to learn more about sorting and filtering right now, go watch that. If not, take your time, relax, we'll get to it. Now up top here in the ribbon, you'll also see the ascending and descending button. See, I should have waited. I usually wait until I mention the ascending button before I go over that joke. Mm. I got to remember that for next time when I re-record this class 10 years from now. <laughs> but whatever field you happen to be on, like company name, if you hit the sort ascending button, it'll sort that field. Okay, or this one here, sort descending. See how that works? Same thing. Same as using these little buttons here. All right, let's remove the sort, and it puts it back into the... This is the order that they were entered in, okay, if you turn off the sort. Now, the boss wants to see all the customers from New York. Okay, let me go ahead. I'm going to maximize this table. If you're only working with one table and you want to see it fully, just double click on the header or click on the maximize button over there. That will maximize that table. Okay, so now I can, I can work with it with more space here. Okay, and again, to restore it right there. All right, but that's Windows 101 stuff. You guys know that stuff already. All right, so I want to see just the customers from New York. Now, there's a million ways to do everything in pretty much all the Microsoft Office applications, Access especially, Access and Excel, there's like six different ways to sort and filter. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. You pick one that you like and stick with your favorite one. My favorite way is just to find the one that I like, right click, and then there's right down here you'll see equals New York, does not equal New York, contains New York, does not contain New York. All right, and there's more advanced options over here. Okay, but for now, I'll just pick equals New York. There you go. I have now filtered the records to show just New York. And you can see 
this little guy here has a little filter symbol on it. And the toggle filter is now on. And down here it says filtered. See, there's a lot of different ways you could tell that you've filtered the records. Click here, and that'll remove the filter. See that? Or you can toggle it there. The filter actually stays set in the table. You just turn it on and off. So right now the filter is customers where the state is New York. I can turn that on and off at will. Okay. Another way you could filter, drop this little box down here, and you'll see all these little checkboxes. You'll see a checkbox for each item that exists in that table, in that field. All right, you'll see select all, which allows you to select all of them or deselect all of them. There's blanks. If you want to see just the blank records, right, turn off all the records, then click on blanks, and you'll see just the blanks, the null values, people who don't have states. Okay. Drop it down. Select all. Let's say you want to see just New Yorkers. Okay. Turn off that, right? Select all, turn them off. If you just if you just turn them all off and hit okay, it goes back to everybody. All right. But turn that off. That allows you to deselect these boxes and pick New York. There you go. There's just the New Yorkers. If you want to see New York and Florida, check those both on. See? All right. That way you can pick as many or as little as you want. Okay. There you go. And again, I've got lots of lessons on advanced filtering. Honestly, I don't really spend a ton of time on filtering and sorting at the table level because in the next lesson, we're going to learn about queries. And queries are a lot more powerful. Plus, queries are permanent. You can build a query, set the criteria, the parameters that you want. All right, you could say, I want customers from New York with credit limits of $1,000, sorted alphabetically, last name, first name. Save that as a query, and now you never have to repeat those steps again. All right, it's saved for you. You'll see the data just the way you want. We're going to learn that in the next lesson. So I really only use these sorting and filtering tools as a quick way for me, the developer, to just come in here and say, oh, I got to quickly see who's from this zip code. Okay, come over here, right-click on the zip code, equals 90802. There you go. All right, all done. Turn the filter off and get out of Dodge. Now, keep in mind, when you filter something, right, if I filter by Smith, for example, all right, all the records are still on the table. They haven't gone anywhere. The filter just displays the records that you want to see. You said, I want to see just Smiths. Okay, there you go. All right, if you turn the filter off, those records are still safe. Don't worry, they haven't gone anywhere. Access doesn't eat them. Okay, I mentioned a minute ago how you can see that you're filtered. All right, filter those. Notice down here you got filtered. That says filtered. It'll say filtered over here in the status bar. Plus, this also now says one of five. Right down here with these navigation buttons. These are the navigation buttons, by the way. We'll talk more about these when we get into forms. Right, this moves to the next record. See that? So it's moving. Previous record, first record, last record, new record. All right, you, you don't usually use these when you're in data sheet view. You use these when you're in single form view. So each, each record, like Barbara Peters, will show up on the screen by herself with all of her fields. We'll learn about that when we get to forms in a couple of lessons. Now, you can apply multiple filters and sorts at the same time if you want to. Again, queries are better for this, but if you, the developer, are just coming in here and poking around, right? Let's say I want to sort this by last name. So I'll put a sort on, right-click, sort A to Z, okay? Then I want to filter based on New York, right-click, equals New York. And then further, I only want to see customers from Buffalo, New York. So I'll find city, right-click, Buffalo. Now I see Buffalo, New York, last name. All right, filtered by state, filtered by city, sorted by last name. So there's multiple filters and a sort. Now, how are we going to send this to the boss? The boss wants to see this list. Well, you can print it if you want to go old school. You can send it as an email attachment, or you can export it to a Word document if you want to make some changes to it. Let me show you real quick how to do these. We'll have more lessons on all of this stuff very soon. But to print it, just go up to File, and then Print, just like the old days. Remember File Print? Are you old enough to remember that? All right, Quick Print just sends it to whatever your default printer is. Mine's a little laser printer I got sitting right here on my desk. If I just want to print it without wasting time with options, just hit Quick Print. The Print will bring up the Print Banner, which lets you pick your printer, number of pages, number of copies, all this good stuff. Okay? And again, I'll talk a lot more about printing in a future class. All right, File, Print. Print Preview brings up a preview of what it's going to look like when you print it. Now, on this screen, this is where you can also set things like margins and the page size and all that. But right over here is what I want you to see. The email button 
Click on that, it will open up your default email program. Usually for most of you, if you're working with Microsoft Office, it's Outlook. And again, this is pretty simple. I cover this in a future lesson also. Okay, and here's the more button right here. Drop that down and you can export it to a Word document. All right, you can send it to Excel. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Right now, I'm just showing you quickly where this stuff is. We'll cover it in detail in future lessons. Okay, here's the print button here also. When you're ready, you take a peek at it, right? This little magnifying glass, you can zoom in and out so you can see what it's going to look like. If you have multiple pages, you can scroll up and down or use the navigation buttons. Okay. But I don't actually want to print this, so I'm going to close the print preview and come back here to table data sheet view. Okay, so let's turn the filter off, toggle filter, and let's remove the sort. All right, everybody's back to normal now. So one more time, and I can't emphasize this enough, if you're building a database that you plan on having other people work with that don't know access, you want to keep them out of your tables. Okay, so sorting and filtering here, these are tools for you, the developer, to use. All right, your end users are going to stick with forms and reports and will make menus for them that they can use to navigate your database. They'll never be in your tables. Now, one of the problems with sorting and filtering is that they're not permanent. They'll stay when you make a sort and you close the table and come back into it. For example, let's say I sort by last name. Okay, if I close the table and then come back into it, all right, I'm still sorted by last name, but if someone else comes in here now and sorts by first name, okay, close the table. Now, it might ask if you want to save changes to the design, right? I changed the order. I changed the, the sort, so say yes. If I come back in here, now it's sorted by first name. So the, the last thing that you do is what gets saved, all right? Now, filters also get saved, but they don't reapply when you open. So if I sort this, or excuse me, if I filter this by New York and close it. Even if I say save changes, yes. If I open it back up again, the filter is still saved. And if I toggle the filter, it keeps the last one that you used. Okay, but it doesn't reapply it. I just covered this in a tech help video called filter on. It's the filter on property. If you're curious about how this works, go watch that video. I'll put a link down below, but it's a more advanced technique. The point I'm trying to make is you might come in here and do something like See just the customers from New York, from Buffalo, sorted by last name, and you want to save that. So you don't have to keep coming in here and reapplying sorting and filterings. That's where queries come in. You may actually have multiple queries based on your customer table. Another one for customers from California. Another one where you had to type in the state each time you run it. Those are all possible with queries. You don't have to keep reinventing the wheel, putting in parameters, putting in filtering, putting in sorting. Queries allow you to save all of that information, the filters, the sorts. You could save that as a custom query. Then you or anybody else, really, who doesn't even know access can open it up by just double-clicking on the query.